We had been unable to find a route through the dense forest to the pygmy village, so we seized this opportunity to bribe our way with salt, which necessity of life is very difficult for them to obtain. Boy! Kuja Hapa! Kuja! Kuja Hapa! Here you are. They love it. Like a child loves candy. It's very scarce in the forest. Chumbi! Chumbi Mingi! Kuja! Chumbi Guinea? Guinea? Ife Yo! Deep! He says he'll take us to the pygmy clearing if we bring plenty of salt. We better bring plenty of water. Something tells me he's going to be plenty thirsty. Finally, our little guide brought us to a clearing in the center of the deep Ituri forest, and hundreds of pygmies came from all directions to greet us. The average height is a little over four feet and they rarely weigh more than 75 pounds, but they are well-proportioned and completely strong. This is the smallest tribe of people in the world. They live in clans of 20 or 30, a few miles apart, and a representative of each family receives the salt. leaders are in turn ruled by a great king who occupies his throne through blood succession, just like the crowned heads of Europe. He is honoring us by coming in from the depths of his forest capital. We wanted to pay our respects to his majesty there, but the darkness in the interior makes photography impossible, and the king graciously offered to come to us in the clearing. He is comparatively young, and both he and his subjects show character and intelligence. In this, they differ from most of the other African tribes. Besides supplying music for the dance, these great tom-toms boom out messages in a code similar to our telegraphy. <laughs> Everybody dances in pygmy land, and their chanting, while not particularly harmonious, has a fast rhythm that makes the feet want to do things. These are the original hot dogs. The pygmies have practiced companionate marriage for centuries, long before Judge Lindsay was ever heard of. If a marriage doesn't take after a year's tryout, they start all over again with a new wife. No one is allowed more than one wife at a time, except the king. He gets two for safety's sake, to ensure a son and future king. These are the queen. They are very modest and shy <laughs> when the king is around. According to scientists who have made a study of the past history of this race, the pygmy is not really a Negro. And their faces certainly show a great similarity to nearly every other nationality in the world. Less than 2,000 of this particular tribe are known to exist, and until our visit, no one ever knew the proper tribal name, which is Ifi, I-F-I, Ifi. Here is an unusual fact. This peculiar style of wrestling is exactly the same as a very popular sport in Japan called rice wrestling, and here we find it in the center of Africa, 10,000 miles away. The idea of the thing is, the first one who is thrown off his feet is the loser. They make everything that they use, and the jungle furnishes them with food. Here they are constructing arrows. The shafts are made from the hearts of palm trees, which are strong, light, and durable. Look at these beautiful teeth. A dentist in Africa would have a great chance <laughs> to starve to death. They mine and smelt their own iron, which they mold into arrowheads. The big savage in the center is the official poison mixer for the whole tribe. 
He actually stands only five feet, ten inches. But the difference in height is so noticeable that he looks like a giant beside them. This man belongs to another tribe and is maintained by the pygmies for one purpose. He mixes the poison. Then they dip their arrows into it and put the blame on him for whatever they kill. Their own conscience is clear because the force of the arrow will not cause them, but the poison does. That's their way of escaping responsibility. <laughs> Darn clever, these pygmies. The large mound with the little house on it in the background is a great anthill. This is where we lived while here. They shoot very accurately, but depend more on the poison than the force. These tiny people kill a huge elephant with these small arrows, but it takes three or four days for the poison to take effect. After the elephant is hit, they follow him through the dense jungle until he dies. If a golfer had this perfection of motion, there wouldn't be anything but champions. Notice how he always keeps his eye on the target, and he follows through with almost continuous action. Yes, they have some bananas. You can tell by their fat tummies. It makes a great scene. It is very difficult for one who has never been in Africa to realize the vast amount of wild animals that live in this wonderful country. Many different kinds are always to be seen, but it is very hard to get close enough to photograph them. Any unusual noise on the belt makes every bird and beast scurry for shelter. Great hornbill stalks suddenly lift their 50 pounds into the air like a squadron of aeroplanes taking off. Inquisitive monkeys, comparatively safe in the treetops, chatter incessantly, and the plane becomes alive with sounds of every description. A cheetah slinks off, uttering his odd bird-like call. Unusual and rare baby bat-eared foxes run for their dugout where they huddle close together and cry plaintively in fear for their lives. Even a herd of ostriches glide by. The huge pads on their feet muffle the sound and they make great speed in their springy, strutting manner. It's like Mother Nature holds a grudge against the zebra. Its glaring stripes make it an outstanding target for beasts of prey in search of food. Almost powerless when attacked by a lion, but oh boy, they kick and bite viciously when bothered by other animals. Zebras in zoos over here rarely make any kind of a sound, but this shrill bark is common both day and night in Africa. The stripe patterns are like human fingerprints. No two are found alike. They are often found grazing in company with a herd of topi, which are similar to a large American deer. These two widely separated species often fight together against their kind. The ripples across the picture round are heat waves, for it is 130 in the shade, and we never found much of that. Not the least bit camera conscious, just the born actor. <laughs> His relations are running out on him. I don't know whether he's calling his mother or his father, but I guess he wants his mama. Though lions kill hundreds of thousands for food each year, the zebra still survives and increases in number, and their pounding hoofs in mad stampede can be heard on all the belts of Africa.
<laughs> the original rubberneck. You can't get close to a giraffe without him seeing you. But their curiosity is stronger than their fear. And often they'll stand a hundred yards away and gaze steadily down at you. They are natural born reachers. They will drink every day if near water, but they can get along without it for weeks at a time, thereby making a monkey out of the camel. A full grown giraffe is the tallest animal on the face of the earth, often standing nearly 16 feet high. Hunters rarely kill these harmless monsters, but the natives often do, for the hide makes a bullwhip 30 feet long without a break. two lions are stuck with food and lazy. They're just looking for a shady place to snooze. But Mr. Giraffe doesn't trust them. He just remembers a very important business engagement elsewhere. For such awkward bodies, they can make great speed, sometimes traveling as fast as 40 miles an hour. Our microphone registers only the hoofbeats. For giraffes, having no vocal cords, cannot utter a sound. They're just naturally dumb, but not quite as dumb as the yokel who first saw one in a circus and said, there ain't no such animal. Here is a marvelous chance to study their peculiar rocking horse gallop. All four feet are never off the ground at one time. They were once called camel leopards due to their leopard spots and their unusual ability to go without water. The huge legs, long neck, and sloping back make the giraffe appear clumsy. But notice how the head remains level, while the neck takes up the bumps like a shock absorber. They could run clear across the picture with a glass of water between their horns and not spill a drop. Once underway, these great runners are hard to stop and they have often hung themselves on the telegraph wires of the new railroad, which has been started from the Indian Ocean coast. The little youngsters keep up with the old folks, even leading at time. Here is a sure enough neck and neck race. <laughs> with the little fellow trying to hitch on behind. <laughs> if he only had sent, he'd grab tail. Flamingos by the million. Each bird stands nearly four feet high and weighs about 30 pounds, but the flesh is odorous and unfit to eat. <laughs> it looks like the parade of the wooden soldiers. They appear to be floating, but in reality they are walking in deep mud under a foot or so of shallow water. Mr. and Mrs. Flamingo are inhaling their daily bread. The lake is full of soda and contains some invisible form of life on which they feed by scooping it into their tremendous beaks. They have a soft pink plumage with the wing tips a vivid red, and we are sorry that our equipment does not include a natural color camera. It is an amazing sight to watch a flock numbering hundreds of thousands suddenly lift themselves into the air, so thick that they hide the sun and cast a huge shadow over the lake. But after traveling a short distance in a beautiful cloud of fluttering wings, they settle again on the surface and continue their feeding, never seeming to want to go over the top of the chasm and into the world beyond. At sunset, the lake is the reality of an artist's dream. A golden sun fades to a lovely pink in natural harmony with the color of the flamingo that wing their way in vivid circles, but always within sight of the lake, which is their home in life and their grave in death.
Watch the fish trying to gain the upper water so they can spawn in the place where they were born. Oh, how would you like to have that baby on your hook? Fifty miles below the falls, the Nile spreads out into a flat, virgin wooded valley. Unusual trees such as this dot the shores. And in the interior, a short distance, are almost impassable papyrus swamps. It is here that the famous Pepsi fly, which causes sleeping sickness, breeds. And the far-famed white rhinoceros makes his home. Here he is, the square-lipped or so-called white rhino. He is much larger than the common black variety, and less than 200 are known to exist. Gosh, that's a big one. What do you think he weighs? Oh, about three tons. Gee, all bulk and no brains. 